guys? Today I'm going to be going over my drop shot setups, what I use and why. Now I know everybody on here um, that watches mostly are already fishermen, already catch fish. So I'm not going to get into too much detail in terms of rigging baits and how to rig baits. Um, but I do know that there could be some beginners. And so uh, I'd ask my experienced anglers to uh, bear with me a little bit and so I can give a brief summary of a drop shot. So drop shot is basically a finesse technique for the most part, although I'll show you my adaptations later. Uh, but it consists of a hook with a leader attached to a weight. So I have that set up here. Don't know how well you're going to be able to see that hook. But most importantly, the hook is standing up from a pal polymer knot. The tag end goes back through the eye and down to a weight of some sort. So a basic breakdown. You have the hook. This is a one-aught hook. This is fairly large. Um, I've used this in some situations, but not many. I would generally go with a size one or two with this style hook and the style hook I don't quite remember the name but I have them here so you can go with these um, generally when it comes to a finesse technique you want to go as light as possible so this is a 1 8 1 8 ounce weight this is what I generally run with for the most part 1 8 if you start getting a lot of wind, I'll go to 3 16th. Or if you need to get down deeper, as I'll explain with heavier rigs, you can go 1 4th. I haven't gone past that yet, but I'm looking at doing that here in the future. Put that down here. So, like I was saying, you want to go try to go as light as possible. So, earlier on, I would say, um, and actually into uh, last year a little bit, 2018 up to present day, um, we've had quite an uh, explosion of vegetation. Before you would go to Los Banos Creek Reservoir, it would be pretty much open, relatively clear. You'd have your, your wood lay down structures, but you didn't have a lot of algae growth as I remembered it. In addition to that, you go to Spot X, um, it was open in the middle. Yeah, you had some vegetation around the edges, but not much at all. So in the spirit of that and going as light as possible, I would use these quite a bit. And this is a small hook, right? And that's when you uh, get in a nose hook in your bait, as everybody knows. Um, you can nose hook or you can wacky rig your bait. And then there's another style that Aaron Martins does where he doesn't hook, nose hook it, but he hooks it about a quarter in or so. So it has a, a wag to it. And he says that's most uh, effective for him. So in the spirit of that, let's go ahead and uh, this is one I use often, Robo Worm, uh, the margarita color. Bass tend to like purple. So of course, typical nose hook. And of course, I didn't do that perfect. You can get it right there if you want. Um, or what some people do, almost hook, ooh, hooked myself, but it came out quickly. Thank goodness. What other people do is also, they do this style too, where the tip is, of the hook is just barely sticking out. Not sure if this is focusing. So um, bear with me if it's not, I apologize. But this is another way that people do that, hide that hook. It gives them a little bit more uh, weed protection at times, especially if you don't poke the uh, nose of the hook all the way through from there. Wow, I'm end up poking myself on video like that. All right, of course there's the wacky rig. From there, the other style that Aaron Martins was talking about where he, I think how does he come through it? Like this, all right. Well, he's got, I guess, more of this style to it. I have to go back and watch how he did it, but I believe it's more like this style. 
And so he says that gives it an interesting wobble. I think it's a little bit more down in here, but it gives it more of an interesting wobble. So that's the short of that. But I'd go down to those uh, six, size six mosquito hooks. Of course, then you reel in, but then I also noticed you catch a nice, you catch a larger size bass and you could possibly lose that bass on these smaller hooks. What I use now, rebarb hook, it's a wireless, wireless hook. And I probably shouldn't have put that worm away now that I'm thinking about it, but. These are straight shank wireless hooks. And basically on the back of any robo worm package, they talk about these, the rebar right here. So you can get these just about anywhere. I ordered these off Tackle Warehouse. But this is more of a weedless setup and is actually now my standard go-to because as I mentioned, we've had an explosion in vegetation around here, which is the reason for the different setups that I'm going to go over. And pretty much a little Texas rig, light wire drop shot, completely weedless. So I love these hooks. I use these all the time now. I know I don't get the most finessiest presentation but I also don't lose my rigs as much, and I still catch fish. Now, with the weights, in addition to going light as possible, several styles of weights are going to my tackle box here. Excuse me for hitting the table. We've got the, also the teardrop weight. Um, cost a lot less than the pencil weight, and Honestly, I'm going to try uh, fooling with these a little bit more. That's why I bought some. I got those in various sizes, uh, depending on if you really need to drop down deep into some cover. Also, a drop shot cylinder weights. These are 3 sixteenths. Um, these go a little bit better on, on some of my drop shot setups, which is why I have them. Also got more. These are quarter ounce teardrop. But again, you got to read the situation. You want to try to go as light as possible. Now, generally, let's get to the setups. So, generally with my, uh, my reels, what are the main things I like? Um, I like to go with a, at least a, a 3,000 reel. You could say a 2,500 to a, to a 3,000, depending on which company you're with, um, you're looking at. So, generally, I use threes. Um, I like the line take up, especially with the finesse technique. Uh, being a beginner, uh, I couldn't believe how much line I would have out there when you're when you're reeling in. Even if you're throwing, you're not throwing too far. It's a bottom technique. So in addition to where you're standing, it's going that much further in the water, and you have that much further to pull that fish, take up that slack, make sure when he hits that line, because many times they hit it on slack line, you might have quite a bit of line out there. And so I want to be able to take that up and get that fish in. So that's the main thing. But my lightweight setup. Let me cut this out. So my lightweight setup, this is a medium light. It's a 6'9 rod, so the shortest rod I have actually. Um, but this I do really light stuff on. My lightest techniques with the drop shot. Um, this when I was out at Lake McClure, where it was all rock face, and they had some lay downs, but nothing deep or, or terrible where you could get wrapped up in it, and it's clear water, and you need that, that nice finesse technique presentation, that's when this one comes into play. Um, like I said, I used to use something like this out uh, where we are now before the vegetation um, explosion happened, but now this is, you know, clear water, open situations, not a lot of cover, more structure. That's where this comes into play. And then I have it paired with the, uh, the Luz uh, Infinity. Uh, this is the SX30. 
I like this one um, again because it pulls in uh, it's at 32 inches per turn so uh, gets that slack line in get you in contact with the, with the fish so you can keep it pinned and get it in my next setup is the 7.2 medium and this one's my all-purpose uh, drop shot rod um, in most cases I was out at the river so I have something else tied on right now a little a rooster tail but with this one this is eight pound so it it's in that middle of the road if there is a little bit of cover out there um, that that we're looking at if there's a little more current larger fish that that's also a factor too um, sometimes you get in a fight with that uh, medium light and it, it's no joke and the fish isn't even that large it's just if it really wants to fight you or not you get a, a nice three and four pounder on there it can be some trouble whereas you have a lot more control um, with the medium on my uh, medium on my medium light I have uh, I believe 15 braid to six pound fluoro so with that six pound given that finesse presentation you know I have to be careful fight that fish long um, longer and if there's a lot of brush and, and stuff around you get pulled in and bringing that back that's happened to me on this one in a couple of my videos recently when I was out at Los Banos Creek uh, uh, Los County can't even talk right now Los Banos Creek uh, Reservoir so I pulled up hit a fish on the side of the toolies got it up to the surface but once I started pulling it closer it made a beeline into the toolies and that was all she wrote with this so that brings me to my uh, next setup but this is my general overall setup that I use in most cases and I also have it paired with the uh, Xfinity reel for the same reasons to take up that line and they also cast really good too as well and it's extremely smooth so it helps with the whole finesse technique. Now this one here, this is one of my funner um, experiences with the drop shot. As my friend has termed it, it's called a bubba shot. Uh, reason being is that it, it's much heavier as you can see right off the bat. This is a medium heavy. This is a seven foot medium heavy. And this is my flats master. So this is also um, designed for salt water as well. The guides are basically, and then it's got the long handle so you can you can fight and dig in more so than the split style. I have it paired with the Cast King uh, Volant, and I have no partnership with uh, Cast King at all, whereas I am sponsored by Enigma, um, but honestly they are the best rods I've ever used. Um, I'd like somebody to point me to something different or at least come check these out before you say otherwise. This is a, a Valiant. So the Cast King Valiant, um, this is a 4,000. Reason being, takes up 35 inches of line. And I want that because this is where I throw into heavy cover. If you can't get that bite, um, as you've seen out there in, at Spot X, you can get a bite, but can you get them in? And get them in without breaking that line or without getting them stuck in the weeds or without taking a dip, which uh, I have to applaud a lot of my uh, fellow YouTubers for, for getting in that water because that's out for me. So on this one here, I have 20 pound braid and I have that going to 12 and depending on the situation, uh, 15 uh, fluorocarbon. Because the idea is I want to be able to control that fish and pull them out of those weeds and get them to the shore. So that's what this is for. This is the bubble shot. This is what I throw uh, mainly now when I'm out at Spot X or anywhere where there's just uh, extremely heavy cover. Even though it is a medium heavy, I've still managed to throw it out there with the uh, eighth of an ounce. But I prefer the 3 16th, especially since I am trying to punch this down into the weeds and have my worm sitting down. I still want that bottom contact, so sometimes I even go as heavy as a one fourth. So all right, guys, those are my setups and went through why I use them. Let me know uh, what you use and why.
and in what situations and do you have more than one uh, spinning rod that you can do your drop shot on? Because between those, I also do some med rigging. I'll do, you know, other typical things with them, but primarily I like to run the drop shot um, on my medium and on my medium heavy, uh, especially recently. In addition to that, uh, what I like to go with uh, many times, I like the Robo Worm styles here. This is a uh, Margarita Mutilator, Morning Dawn. I like this old bluegill in a, in a lot of areas at, over at McClure. They seem to like this one a little more. This is killer in the shad spawn. If you're, if you're drop shotting during the shad spawn and they're breaking out far, but you know they're looking for bass up close. They're looking for shad up close, excuse me. This one here is a killer. It's worked for me very well. This one here I want to try out. This is a, a curly tail uh, bull bluegill. Haven't used it yet, but I do like that chartreuse tail. So I do want to check this one out. All the other ones I've caught quite a bit of fish on, as you can tell. The other sneak, sneaky ones, these are awesome because I find these in the uh, Walmart bin. But these little short, these little short light Cinco's, they're awesome. Caught quite a few fish on these too when I need to give them that natural presentation. So if you're here this long, man, I appreciate you very much. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next one. There, I'm going to be going over uh, a real review uh, here soon. I might throw some other action in the mix, but probably uh, I'll go over this reel where I lost the footage on the unboxing. So thanks for watching Large Mouth Lunkin. Look forward to seeing you on the next one.